Streaming cyberspace into your place, sanctioned by Bootleg Racing League for the first time ever from Slinger Speedway. It's the Virtual Grip Network's coverage of the Yesteryear Racing 100 Round 4 on the SK Modified Invitational Series Season 35 schedule. You know, it was C.S. Lewis who said, you never know what you can do until you try, and very few try unless they have to. Well, if you're a sim race driver in the Bootleg Racing League, it's time to find out what you can do by trying to race at Slinger. For points leader Jason Menda, with only five markers separating him from Ricky Harden at the top of the standings, him leaving with the points lead he came into Slinger with will depend on how quickly Menda can turn the unfamiliar into the mundane. Tonight, the confines are tighter than a large rear end in a too small lazy boy. So pull that lever, raise those feet, recline that head, and settle in for some simulated short track racing action about to stream your way. A warm Badger State hello and welcome on a foggy Friday night, April 19th, 2024. Papa John Hine will soon be joining yours truly, Bill Soup's on. Not so high up in the VGN broadcast booth here at Slinger Speedway to bring you our words eye view replay. Ryan Seneker turn the knobs and push the sliders. All right, let's go down to Papa John right now behind the wheel of the VGN Thunderbolt Free Slapper inside the tiny confines of the Slinger Speedway. John, what do you know? First of all, uh, how tight is it here again? Never mind. <laughs> Well, I'm just wondering who sent you a picture of me and my rig. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is tight, you know, and, the, and the, 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 the track's really not that forgiving. It's the first time that we've been here, you know, and I'm finding the outside lane is, is maybe might actually work a little bit. The bottom lane is too, but I'll tell you what we got to look forward or uh, look for tonight for trouble spots. I think they're going to be guys, as weird as it sounds, is getting on the throttle too early and shoving out if they're side by side, maybe getting into somebody outside of them. Or if there's not somebody to the outside, getting on the throttle too early and going out and smacking that outside wall, which with these right front tires sticking out like they do, that's going to lead into a lot of trouble for somebody. So I, I think this is going to be, uh, I can't wait to see this. I mean, you know, a new track. Nobody has notes on what to do, how to run it, all that kind of good stuff. This is going to be one of our more entertaining races, I think. John, I know you're complaining about how slow you are out there, but you're only two tenths behind the fastest lap. Well, that's like, you know, saying, uh, uh, I probably shouldn't say that. I'd probably get offended some people, but there's like a bunch of being the you know, tallest midget jokes that are coming to, <laughs> to mind right now. But um, Got it. With yeah. Lap, with yeah, that time, it's around 10 seconds, two tenths is a is a is a large margin eh yeah it is and you know i don't know if lap times are actually going to matter too much here because i think with traffic being the way it is such a small track even the leaders i think are going to be in lap traffic before too long i think what this is going to come down to guys can put their cars in the right spots at the right times i think that's going to be more important than just being fast tonight Okay, we'll see if you can take the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper into pit lane without slowing anybody oh, down. We'll you don't have to ask me. I'm on my way. There you go. We'll see you up here in a few minutes. It's not too high of a climb for John here tonight as it's a small uh, small grandstand. You know, hide behind the wheel as well as the entire broadcast is brought to you by Yesteryear Racing, a unique tour-modified racing league on the iRacing platform that ties history to the present. Race lengths. Track, time of day, weather, number of entries, rules, and point system all mirror actual races and series that took place in history, which means the good old days are back. For more information, visit yesteryearracing.com. All races are streamed live on Marconi Entertainment. Yesteryear Racing, where past meets the present. Quickly, let's run through the points here. Mark Herzog making the season debut at Nashville. The number of drivers who have raced at least once the season climbs to 20, with a dozen having raced in each of the previous three events. Nashville saw Jason Menna finish seventh, while Ricky Harden earned second, shrinking Menda's point lead to five. John Wilson climbed three rungs on the ladder. Matt Hoos doubled that gain. Jeffrey Harden led the first 52 laps at Nashville before 
fall into fifth. The boss man, Lowell Jewell, is tied with Harden. Brandon Myers is under for his first top five. A Nashville 15th was Todd Liston's worst result of the season. Hey, but he's slotted to start on the poll tonight. More about that in just a minute. Joe Zagala will miss tonight as his middle uh, school bowling team, he coaches, has made the Illinois State Tournament. Go! Uh, what would the Illinois be? I don't know. Go Illinoisers. And with that said, Kurt Smith also, the season highlight was a win at Martinsville. All right. John's made it up here with me. Let's quickly run down the starting line. If you're, it's a small field, but maybe that's good since the track is so small. As mentioned, Todd Liston will start on the pole. He's going to be inside of the Chief, Steve Hilbert. John? Tommy Moore is going to start in third with his uh, familiar number 26 there next to him. It'll be Alan Wanamaker in the 74. Lowell Jewell and John Wilson go five and six. Seventh will be Jason Menda. Next to him will be Matt Hoos. Jeffrey Harden will be starting ninth. He's going to be flanked by Mark Herzog. Tom Hilbert is going to start 11th. And uh, while well, I'm not out there, so then Chris Hazel going to round out the field. Well, I think it's going to be lucky for us. It's a small field, only a dozen drivers out there. A little bit foggy here tonight. The pace car pulls off to the right. Give the perfectly mesmerizing Jolsey Kirkland some credit for finding where to do that. I had a hard time finding the track when I was testing this place out. Chug a lug, chug a lug, makes you want to holler, hi ho, and we are underway. 100 laps, they're going to go quick. It is the. Uh, it is Jason, uh, Todd Liston out in front right now. He's being chased by Donnie Moore. And Donnie Moore might have got a little bit of the wall. A little action going on behind. They start bumping and banging. Man, not only is it foggy here tonight, but it is also dark at Slinger. Yeah, this is like a dirt track uh, lighting out here where you got uh, some spots that are definitely brighter than others on the track. Pass for the lead. Moore gets to the inside of Liston. Now let's see if Todd can make the top side work. No, he's going to have to settle for the outside. So trying to tuck in there next. That is the number uh, 74 of Wanamaker. Wanamaker working in there as they continue to race side by side. Oh, they get in the wall. Wanamaker turns it. He gets it straightened out. No caution. Wanamaker continues to bounce off people. He got a little bit of Lowell Jewel. Jewel be able to capitalize, vulture some spots as he moves up into second position. Cooking with hot fish grease is Donnie Moore. Yeah, Donnie, since taking the lead, he's kind of checked out from the field here quite a bit, actually. A little bit of a bump and a bang and let him open up. John, I got to figure that, uh, you know, it's still 100 laps, but the laps are only a quarter mile around. Let's burn those tires up, eh? Yeah, oh. I think oh, we got one kind of sort of around, but I don't see a caution yet. No caution for that one. Yeah, these guys are turning laps in the, the high 10s, low 11s here, so it's not going to take a whole lot of time. If we go caution free, this race is going to be over really quick. Steve Hilbert and Chris Haslip are the last two drivers on the lead lap. And Donnie is less than, or, I mean, we're 11 laps in, and Donnie's already less than a straightaway behind them to putting him a lap down. So, as I was saying earlier, I think, you know, speed's going to be one thing, but being able to get your car in those right spots at the right times, I can already see that that's, that really is going to be a factor here before too long. You can see on the tower Lowell Jewel about a full second behind. Lowell Jewel's got a rear view mirror full of points leader Jason Menda. Mendham will be able to stretch his points lead here tonight as not only uh, will he's running in third position, but the man that's chasing him, Ricky Harden, is a no-show. So that's good news for all the Menda fans out there as the Floridian fireman continues to close his way up. Yeah, I think I saw Jeff post somewhere on uh, one of the social media pages. I don't know, he might have even been in Discord here for us. I think he's out on a beach somewhere. He is indeed. He might be watching this right now from his RV if the internet is good as his campsite. If he is, Ricky, how you doing, baby? Alan Wallenmaker having a great race. Let's look at him. He's in fourth position all by himself. We are already 18 laps into this 100-lap affair. And Donnie's already putting guys a lap down. Chris Hazlip uh, is going high here, letting not only Donnie through, but Lowell Joel and Jason Mendes. 
the gap shrinking a tiny bit as Lowell Jewell knocks off a tenth of a second. He is a long putt away from Jace, uh, from uh, the point leader right now. Yep. Donnie Moore continues as a Lowell Jewell continues to shrink the distance of the putt. Now, now a makeable, maybe 40 footer. You know, Ryan's real good at, you know, pushing the buttons and, and all that kind of stuff. Maybe we can get Ryan to push a button, throw a caution about lap 50, then make him go run the figure eight for the rest of the night. That would be great. Oh, look at Lowell Jewel. The gap is closing, right? Yes, it is. It is just, uh, he is closing the gap like David Letterman's dentist. He is Lowell Jewel now just maybe four car lanes back. You got to wonder if maybe Donnie Moore said there's no reason for me to be racing so hard. I will sacrifice a little bit of gap for a little bit of extra tires at the end. Yeah, for a small track, you know, these guys get around here really quick in these cars. But the one thing about these cars that are kind of a quirk of them, you know, we don't see the tire wear that you do in the late models. But these cars are susceptible to getting a lot of heat in the tire and losing grip. I kind of wonder if Donnie getting out to that big lead push that right front a little bit and maybe uh, got the heat in there and it's been becoming a little harder for him to turn through the corner. Let's jump back and look at Mark Herzog right now. He just made it under the lapped car of Hazel who did a good job of getting out of the way. He's being chased by John Wilson. Wilson won the feeder race here. I think those are the late, no, what would it be? The super late models right before this one. So John, uh, has tasted a little bit of the victory champagne tonight. Maybe that's why he's a little bit off the pace here. Still suffering the side effects of victory bubbly. Soup, we're in Wisconsin. Isn't that a victory cheese here? It's victory cheese. And I'm telling <laughs> you, if you wanted to put the cheese out and let it mold up a bit, tonight would be the night. It is, it is a gloomy night here in the Badger State. Let's go to the lead. Here he comes. Lowell Jewel is now there, and he has brought with him the points leader, Jason Menda. Yeah, Lowell is reeling in Donnie, and Menda is reeling in Jewel here. So uh, I think we're going to have a pretty interesting three-car battle. And I'll tell you, in the next maybe four or five laps, they're going to be into the back of another pack of cars, and that's when things could get really interesting. I'm going to pull back the curtain here a little bit on sim race broadcasting techniques. We have buttons where we push and we can scan the camera forward and backwards. Uh, director, when you get a chance, real quickly, can you... One uh, around and one. Oh, no, it looks like it is the going around. Who is that? That is Tom Hilbert. Now, did he... Oh, he gets his water, and the Matt Hoos got into it. We're looking at the, at the right crash. Yeah, I think Wanamaker had a lift not to knock down the wall coming out of four, and, and, Moose, and Hoos just got into him. That and is. That's, you know, that can happen anywhere. You know, when you've got a lift in an area where you're supposed to be accelerating, that gap between the two cars closes really fast. I'll, I'll tell you, John, I watched a, uh, I watched an, XR, an XRX race from this track. By the way, I'm sad to see that series go away. I really enjoy it. Maybe coming back. Oh, oh, good. That's good Maybe to hear. Maybe coming back. We might I, not have seen the last of those cars. That was sure entertaining, entertaining racing going on. But the point is, I don't remember it being this dark. Maybe the networks brought some more lights there. But my gosh, it's dark out there. John, you want to talk to somebody? Yeah, why don't we talk to Donnie? I okay. mean, he's up front and he's had control of this thing. Hey, Donnie, this is John. You got a copy? I do, John. Well, first trip here to this uh, bull ring. What are your thoughts and what is your strategy for the second half of this race? Uh, it's nice to be up front. There's some high charges in back of me. Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to have to uh, be clean here. Donnie, it's soup. You had a huge lead early on and then Lowell and... and uh, Jason were able to run you down. Were you conserving, or uh, did they have the pace to do it? Uh, no, they had the pace, I guess. Yeah, got it. All right. Good luck. They're doubling up. 
Oh, and he turns it. I'm going to blame myself for breaking his concentration. Our leader looped it. Did it bring out the yellow? It did indeed. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to yeah. I'm not gonna I, sleep well tonight. No, I, you know, yeah, I think Menda may have mistimed that. I'm going to look at this again here. Um, yeah, Jason may have mistimed that a little bit and popped Donnie and, and got him out of shape there. Oh, let's go with that one because it's going to make my conscience a lot cleaner uh, if it wasn't actually Donnie Moore making a mistake. Yeah, okay. We're going to yeah. have one on I Actually, time. Herzog, I'm not even going to put that on Menda. If you go back and look at Herzog, Herzog of the inside row was the first one that looked like to kind of accelerate a little bit and, and, and kind of push Menda into Donnie there. The yellow car of Herzog, you're looking at it right now. He gets, well, maybe. The inside line certainly got the worst of that when Liston involved in it. Well, everybody on the inside paid the price there. <laughs> yeah. You know, as short of a track this is and first time here, because when you go to other tracks, you can kind of know where that green is going to come out. And maybe that green came out before Donnie was ready for it to come. I mean, there's a lot of things that could have happened there. And, it's, and rather than throw one person under the bus, Let's just say that one there is really hard to decipher what may have happened there. Well, there's a lot of camaraderie and friendship amongst the drivers here in the Bootleg Racing League, and our, our director commented that it certainly showed there, as that was a group effort from the inside line, how many people we could spin out. Where does Donnie Moore slot? He's going to slot down in 10th, still on the lead lap. Steve Hilbert, the last of the cars on the lead lap. Lowell Jewell inherits the lead. We're probably going to have a little bit of a delay here as they try to shuffle out who goes where. I wonder maybe if they're going to think about maybe giving Donnie Moore back his spot up front as he was kind of like and Lowell. Lowell might get it. They're going to work it out here as they continue to... Yellow flag laps are quick, and I'll be honest with you, I, I got caught by surprise there by how, how quickly... Uh, not only Donnie uh, or uh, John are the are the green flag laps fast, but the pace lap yeah. laps are fast too. Yes, they are. Wanamaker getting the wave around, so he'll go back onto the lead lap. And I oh, said cool. in practice off air, you know, somewhere somebody coined the, the phrase bull ring, and I kind of think they might have been here the first time that was said. Now the lights are off the pace car. Let me show you something unique about this track. Let's look, put the camera on the pace car here. As the perfectly, oh, look at that camera shot we have off the top of the, that's a great looking shot. Now watch perfectly mesmerizing Josie Kirkland. Oh, she's gonna go around again. When she does bring the car down pit lane, the exit is to the right off of, where is it? There she goes right now, off of turn two to the outside. I love it. This is truly a short track. Okay, now let's turn our attention on to Mold Jew. Love that new camera shot. Tip the hat to our director. We're going green. Working lap number 52. All right. Matt Hoos trying to roll the top side on the boss man. Two veterans going at it. We heard from Hoos before we went to the broadcast, went live. Matt Hoos said the outside line works early on restarts. Well, let's see if he can make the hoosinators cheer as he's trying to prove himself correct. Does he get credit with leading that lap? No. One one thousandths of a second behind uh, Lowell Jewel was Matt Hoos that time around. This time around, he gets credit for leading the lap. You don't have to finish this pass. All you have to do is lead at the line. Can they go side by side for the next 45 laps? Who's beginning to really get the distance now, John? Look at him work the top side. Yeah, he's rolling it really nice, keeping that momentum up. Now he makes the pass cleanly as they come around. He's going to be sole possession of the lead there when he comes by the start finish line. So now Jason Mende, your points leader, is saying, where can I go? And let me correct myself. It's not Jason Mende. It is John Wilson who has made his way 
around Jason Menda in the darkness and the fog here in Wisconsin to be in third position. John Wilson now in the 75. He just saw Hoos go around a Lowell Jewel on the top. I wonder if he thinks he's going to try that as well. So right now he's happy just to follow right behind uh, Lowell Jewel. My goodness, the laps are ticking off. We are so well, We got one around. John Wilson's around. Oh, my boy. Jason Menda is notching up like a like a fighter pilot there, putting stickers on his airplane. He got another one. That time it was John Wilson. And there may have been, this may be a tip of the hat to Menda, maybe a little bit of self-policing as Menda has pulled the car in. Let's go ahead. <laughs> All right. Now, usually we don't like to talk to somebody who just got involved in an incident, but if he's a Canadian, we can we can probably get away with it. John, why don't you talk to John Wilson and see if uh, if he's in the mood to see what happened there? You got him, John. Hey, John. This is John up in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you, John. Well, I think you're a victim there of uh, the tight confines of the racing here a little bit. Uh, how difficult is it uh, when you guys get nose to tail like that to stay off each other? Yeah, it's not easy. You got to kind of keep one foot just kind of hovering over that brake pedal in case you got to give it a tap. And I think Jason just kind of got inside me just a little bit, and there's really not much else I could do. John, yeah, you... oh, sorry. Go ahead, Stu. I almost pulled one of you. Yeah, there you go. You saw. Uh, Matt, who's worked the top side allowed Lowell Jewel? Were you thinking maybe to try the top if you had to, or had you not gotten even to that thought process yet? I actually thought about it, but uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get out of line. <laughs> Got it. All right, they're waving you around. The yellow flags are quick. Good luck to you. Thanks, buddy. All right, the pace cars in. They are doubling up. I got to get my I got to get my wow. rhythm down here as they are ready to go green. All right. Here we go, Matt Hoos gets the jump. Boy, he really looks not only to be out in front comfortably, but he's got this place figured out. All right, Jeffrey Harden, not Ricky, who sits second in part. This is Brandy's husband, Jeffrey, who's now racing in second position. My goodness, you can see those fluorescent 36, the numbers 36 glow through the darkness here at uh, Wisconsin. Glow Jewel is in third with Mark Herzog. In the fluorescent number 57, in and out burger machine, running in fourth. He's being hounded by Donnie Moore is back. Todd Liston is in the mix as well. Liston is more just got underneath Liston. Liston beginning to fall. Yeah, nice comeback for Donnie. What was it, just a couple laps ago, we saw him sitting around, turned around backwards, coming out of uh, turn four there. He's uh, worked his way back up, got a top five. Boston Strong is Donnie Moore. As he's got the ASPCA special inside the top five and still has got himself uh, 28 laps to get to the front. Mark Herzog with a nice run from 10th to 4th. He would be your big mover, which is so often the case for Herzog. Herzog making his second appearance this season. He missed the first two rounds, made his debut last round at Martinsville. Nope, correct, Nashville. Now he's back here tonight. Matt Hoos is comfortable. Can you hear the Hoosinators? They're standing. They are chilling. They are cheering and chilling. They are. That's uh, a good uh, good sign when you got nothing out your windshield, you got nothing in your rear view, and you know if his spotter say anything to him, he's saying no pressure. We love to pull back the the production curtain here at VGN, and I'm gonna do it for you one more time. We talked a little bit about the pace car and it's unique where it goes. We have timed the boogie music to be almost the length of an entire lap. Unfortunately, when we did that, Slinger was not on the schedule. So as they come around, it's almost boogie time. Our boogie song's gonna go for a while tonight. And I'll tell you right now, if there's somebody out there that needs to start dancing. It is Jeffrey Harden. 
coming around. If you're thinking about winning, get the mirror ball a spin and grip. Oh, Walt goes around. They're in boogie time. Oh, my goodness. We got a guy going around. And it is Lowell Jewel from the second position. Oh, oh who's? Who's yeah. just drove in the back of him? And the leader got there so fast that he T-boned Lowell Jewel. The pace car has come out. They're sorting out the lead right now. It is still credited at as Matt Hoos. Oh my goodness, you're looking at that. That's a solid shot there. That was Hazlick that got in there also. Oh, well, you know, you really can't blame how quickly a car gets around on a racetrack that's about the size. If you want to know how big this track is, go out to your local high school and look at the, look at that quarter mile track that, they're, that they run the mile on there. They are yeah. still trying to get cars off the track. Yeah, I'm looking at Matt's car really, really closely. Um, two things. I, I think he's got damage on that right front tire. And second of all, would you say Boston Strong? Look who is in yeah. second. All right. Do we have time? I look at the lights are still on. Quickly, can we dial up Matt Hoos, our leader? And let's find out if what he thinks. Matt, it's soup. Real quick, because the yellow flags are fast here. How's the car feel? Is it raceable? Um, yeah, I got some damage, but it feels all right. Going green here. All right. Good luck. This car pulls off. That's another trick. The pole, pace car pulls off on three, and then they go green. So we've left Matt. All right. He's got it going. Who's with the jump? He's working lap number 987. He's got 13 to go. He says the car feels good. It looks like it's racing good. But he's got Donnie Moore, who has climbed all the way back from his early disaster. He was racing up front. Let's see if he wants to put a move on the Hoosinator. Now. How about Alan Wanamaker having the race of his young career here in the SK Modified Invitational as he's sitting in third? Looking for more. Todd Liston started on pole, racing in fourth, rounding out your top five. It's the yellow Mark Herzog in the 57 in and out machine. Yeah, Matt said he had some uh, damage up there in that 21 car, but I tell you, that car is showing no ill effects. He's uh, opened up about a four-car length lead over Donnie. Chris Hazlip was about to be lapped. He's seven laps down. He just parked the car on the Wisconsin Alfalfa. Got out of the way. John Hine, who did not actually take the grid because he's our VGN commentator. Oh, Another yellow. Liston involved in this one? Yep. As he goes around, he was inside of, of Herzog. A little bit of a clip from another driver going by. We're going to take another look at this and see if they actually made contact. Or this was just some net code here. Oh, they were... I don't, it looks like Liston may have gone around on his own there. Now, if you go back to about the center of the corner, actually, uh, at least what I'm seeing, yeah, uh, it looked like uh, the 57 just looped him around there. And didn't do it with the bumper, but did it with one of the sidebars, which there's something you don't see every day. Okay, I'm going to assume we're going to have a green-white checker. Or here at, at Slinger, let me rephrase that, we're going to have a green-white checker because it's going to happen that fast. And I am going to do my best to be ready. We're not going to talk to a driver. I've got this place figured out for, for tomorrow night. So if you want to tune back in on, on, on uh, Saturday night, your lead commentator will have it figured out. What makes it so quick is that the pace car, they turn the lights off, it pulls off on the exit of, of quarter number two, and then we go racing. Yeah, Matt, last time where he fired, he was almost in the center of three and four. So he's not waiting. You know, traditionally we wait till we're almost in turn four. Matt fired before we hit turn four. And I'm guessing that's because he has to here 
Now, Watch and see if he gets that early jump again. Now remember, who's made the pass for the lead on the outside? Right now, he's up more to the outside. Great jump from Hoos. He comes across, he gets the green. Next time around, in 10 seconds, will be the white. 10 more seconds will be the checker. It is Matt Hoos, out in front of Donnie Moore, having the race of his young career, is Alan Wanamaker. The, the white flag is waving. Two more quarters to go. They're going to happen quick. It's the 21. Matt Hoos, hear the Hoosinators standing up and cheering as Matt Hoos wins round number four here at Slinger. Donnie Moore gets second. We're going to get to talk to Alan Wanamaker. What a great race we had here tonight. This was a good one. As we, our first ever yesteryear racing 100 at Slinger. We hope they come back to sponsor this event every season. With that said, the racing is over. Our broadcast is not. We'll take a short break. Not quite as short as a yellow flag here at, at Slinger, but pretty darn short. So don't go far. We'll come back, run down the entire finish order, talk to the top three drivers before we put a lock on the gate. You're watching VGM. Welcome back to a foggy night in Wisconsin here at Slinger Speedway and the Virtual Grip Network's cover of coverage of the Yesteryear Racing 100, round four on the SK Modified Invitational Series, season 35 schedule. The results are in. Let's give them to you now. He started in eighth position. He worked his way through the field. He made a pass for the lead on the outside, made a stick. We're talking about the 21 of Matos as he picks up his first win of the season. Donnie Moore. Chasing him, was up front early, got into trouble, came back to finish second. He's got to figure that a great run from him. Starting in fourth, coming home third, his best result of his SK Modified career. We're talking about the 74 of Alan Wanamaker. We'll get to talk to him in just a minute. Mark Herzog and John Wilson go fourth and fifth. I'm going to go one more and leave the rest for my partner. We'll go down to the sixth position. That is Jeffrey Harden. The rest of these I'm going to give to John. Yeah, the 87, uh, Todd Liston is going to come home seventh. Thomas Hilbert, eighth. Steven Hilbert comes home ninth. Lowell Jewel will round out your top ten. Chris Hazel will start 11th. Jason Menda, 12th. And I come home in that lucky number 13. You got it. If you're a friend of Alan Wanamaker, make sure that he knows to go to the interview booth so we can talk to him in a minute. Here's a man who knows where to go, and it's Matt Hoos because he has several career wins to his credit, and he gets another one tonight. Well, first time at Slinger, and you get yourself a win. Uh, nice pass on the outside to make it work. Yeah, I knew that outside was strong, so uh, I knew that was my only shot because it's so hard to pass on the bottom. It's such a quick track, and it's really a lot of fun, but uh, it's quite a little scary at the same time. I want to talk about maybe the turning point of the race, and that is when do you go on a, on a, on a restart we noticed that you were going really early there, almost almost just out of quarter three. Yeah, we normally go out of four, but at this track, the uh, the way the iRacing has it, the green's coming out in the middle of three and four, so kind of just going somewhere around there. You made the pass on the outside to get the lead. Were you worried there at the end that Donnie Moore might be able to do the same thing to you? Oh, yeah. Um, I I was thinking he had a shot at me. That's why I tried to jump early, because uh, I knew that outside was good. And uh, if anybody was going to be able to make it work, I knew he was. And uh, good race by all them guys. It was, a, it was fun. 
Matt, we'll get you out of here on this one. What was your impression coming into the race here at Slinger? And how does it differ after the win leaving Slinger? Uh, does the place grow a little bit on you? Well, I was wishing for a little, or hoping for a little more green flag, but uh, it's kind of what I expected coming here. I mean, you know, we're going to a quarter mile track where everything happens fast and there's not a whole lot of room. So I guess a little better than I expected. Uh and uh, it turned out definitely better than I expected for myself. Well, thanks, God, we had a few yellows. Otherwise, we wouldn't have time even to pull the lever on the Lazy Boy. The race would have been over before we got comfortable. Hey, Matt, congratulations on the win. Well done. Uh, thanks, Soup, and thanks, guys up in the booth here and all the guys in BRL and Holly and everybody that watches the Hoosinator channel. <laughs> well done. Matt Hoos, your winner here tonight. All right. John, you get to talk to Donnie Moore, who was up, he was down, he was up, and he finishes in second. Yeah, that's a fact. Donnie, you had one of the more eventful nights of anybody that I can uh, remember. Uh, and I tell you, though, you came out on the good end of that, a second place. Uh, what was your uh, our, what was your strategy to get back up to the front after you had that uh, unfortunate incident? Well, it was an unfortunate incident, Uh new track i guess we learned some things here one thing we definitely don't interview the leader while he's taking the green oh that wasn't my fault i was totally distracted and uh, i didn't hear the green and uh yeah that's what happened there that's that that's really unfortunate i want to win this inaugural race here but uh coming in seconds okay i guess it's unfortunate uh lowell had a bad run there too but uh Hats off to Matt Hoos and, uh, and Allen for, for a third place. Well, let me ask you real quick. You know, you, like you said, uh, it was the first time here. Did that track throw any curveballs? Or, or, you know, what did you learn for the next time you come back? Um, well, not to let you guys in the, my car when I'm leaving. I know that. <laughs> no, uh, there's no learning, but I just absolutely love this track. This track is so familiar to a local track we have here. Same pit entrance, exit, and uh, banking, and just about the same length. I really love this track. Would that be Wall? No, uh, Hudson. Hudson. Okay, because when I first saw this, I thought of Wall Stadium, but I have to look up Hudson now if that's a lot like that. I'm going to bet there's a lot of really good racing there. Well, Donnie, you know what? <laughs> yep, sorry, the booth messed up tonight. We learned just like you did how quick the, the laps click off, even under caution. Um, the future, we're going to get a little better at that. So, uh, yeah, um, sorry about that. And um, anybody want to give a shout out to? <laughs> Soup, did you want to say something? <laughs> He's 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 busy trying to get out from under the bus. I have a coat of shame as I'm trying to fit it around my neck. All I know is last time we played poker, you bumped me out on two bad beats. So maybe I maybe you had it coming. And you haven't played since. I know. I knew that was it. <laughs> All right, you made. I'm glad you got second. Didn't get the win. Good job, Donnie. See you guys. Thanks. Good sport, Donnie Moore. Donnie Moore and Soup. Uh, once you get the tire marks off your your back, there from oh. the bus backed over you. I, I'm going to guess you're going to interview Alan here. <laughs> I, I I knew it. I knew I was guilty at the time. Let's go ahead and let's talk to a guy that uh, we haven't had to talk to before. Alan Wanamaker gets his first post race interview. Alan, congratulations, man! You started on the outside of row two. You were able to race near the front the whole race. Yeah, it was wild. I tell you, before I race this track again, man, I think I'm probably going to need a Sam Adams Boston logger to settle my nerves down. This is a, this is a, best way I can describe this is like a, uh, you know, an amusement park ride. I mean, it's a wild ride, but yeah, you just try to hang on. Had you done any of the feeder races earlier in the night to prep for this one? Well, yeah, all week I've been doing some, uh, the Slinger's actually the, the race on the SK and the official series. Huh. The, those are hit or miss, uh, but I've been doing, you know, probably, I did five or six of those this week. Thought I was pretty fast and then came out here and, I don't know, probably practice was maybe mid-pack, maybe a little uh, little lower, I'm not sure, but everybody's pretty even, I thought. It was a pretty pretty tight race. Okay, with this being your first interview, post-race interview, let's get to know you a little bit. Where do you hail from? What do you do? And uh, what's your relationship status? Yeah, so I'm married. I've been married for uh, 24 years. Got a kid, uh, a nine-year-old. 
I just turned nine. I'm actually originally from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, home of uh, the Madhouse. But uh, I live in outside of Boston. I've uh, been living up in New England for you know quite a number of years now. And uh, for, for a career, I'm a, I'm a banker. I work for a company uh, called First Citizens, which is uh, headquartered down in, in Raleigh, my home state in North Carolina. Okay, VGN interview rule is you can't mention family members without giving their names. Wife's names and, and your and your child's yeah. name. Yeah, wife is Leah, and my son's name is Camden. Camden? As in, uh, yeah, as in well, Camden, that's Maine. Your, or you're in Boston, Camden Yards, baby. Cam, well, yeah, that's Baltimore. Baltimore. Oh, it's yeah. Baltimore. Sorry, that's right. Fenway, baby. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Fenway. I know that. What's, I, that? what's wrong Su- with soup tonight? Soup, I have to say soup, uh, not your night, man. <laughs> I know where Camden Yard is. All right. All right. With that said, we're going to get you out of here with our fall poll question. If you could have any one superhero power, what would it be? Um, One superhero power? Probably um, probably hearing. Probably, you know, can hear. Super hearing. That's a yeah. new one. All right. Yeah. That's, uh, well done. <laughs> we like that one. Good thinking on that one. Alan Watermaker finishing third tonight. Thanks, guys. Oh, Camden Yard is clearly in, in Baltimore with a, Oh, I, John, you want to take the? I'm going to do the ending. See how much more I can screw up this <laughs> broadcast. I was going to turn off. If you like tonight's broadcast, I don't know how you could, um, but if you're willing to try again, we're going to be back next week. We're going to Kern Raceway. That's like in Northern California by Bakersfield. I know where that is. Uh, 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 Camden Yard is not there either. Uh, season 35, round five. You can read what's going on. But before then, we're back here tomorrow night, Slinger. We'll see if I can screw up any more restarts if possible. That's going to be uh, uh, tomorrow night and on the 20th, uh, 8.55 Eastern Time, 5.55 Pacific Coast Time, 2.55 in Hawaii, and sometime on the day before if you're in Japan. With that said, these broadcasts and all the future broadcasts and past broadcasts been, have been a production of of the Virtual Grip Network. Before we go, I'd also like to thank our sponsor and welcome them to come back again next week. I should have done this earlier, but I want to talk about these guys. They are yesteryear racing. Come on, I hope you're still on the broadcast because this is important. They're a unique tour modified racing on the iRacing platform with ties to history and present day. Race lengths, track, time of day, weather, number of entries, fuels, commentators messing up the green flag of the restart, and point systems, all near actual races and series that take place in history which means the good old days are back and and, uh, and there's connection to to alan wanamaker in this one as he as he is part of that for more information uh he's he's what he is i'm getting more news he is in it he is he is running it he is the he is the season the series organizer to that alan wanamaker who finished how about this if you want to have a reason to sponsor a race Sponsor of BRL Waste, and we will guarantee you a podium finish. That's what happened to Alan Wanamaker here tonight. For more information, go to yesteryearracing.com. All races are streamed live on Maconi Entertainment. That's M-A-C-O-N-I Entertainment. Not Marconi, the inventor of the radio, but no, Maconi. Uh, Marconi, also the rival of Tesla. But I, di- I digress. Yes, you're racing where past meets the present. I'm in the closet. Here's your hat. Until next time, have fun from the castle.